Tie it down, it'll be here till Wednesday. You're a long way from Chicago. You need me around. Don't you ever open your mail? I'm farsighted. But you're not colorblind, Raymond. That was a pink slip, just about as pink as they come. Oh, I thought it was a white flag. You have a dime. We'll find a phone booth and use it. Call my office, have them wire you a plane ticket back to Chicago, and then pick up your severance pay. There's a limit even to my pride. And my patience. You'll come running. your name? Edgar. Have you ever been on the couch, Edgar? I mean, have you ever had your psyche probe? We're not allowed to date the guest, ma'am. People don't fall in love anymore, Edgar. They form a mutually compulsive, complementary interrelationship of egos.
almost cut us in half. Tell them. I guess she couldn't see us with the spray and everything. You're supposed to be on our side. I want you to call the police. That's a good idea. Are Let's you going call to tell the police. Me where the phone is? I hope you're not taking Mitch seriously. I knew it was you up there. Did you run out of diseases to sponsor? Sydney Brooks. You were in the plane? Mm -hmm. Well, then you know how fast she was going. She must have been doing over 100. 148. See? Thanks. What's your name? What are you doing here? Look, I don't care who she is. I don't care whether she reports me to the boss or not. She got exactly what she had Boy, coming. Clear? Are so low? I know. Your designer's finished your new boat. The Sunshine Baby. It'll be here in about an hour. Sydney will have a marvelous. You probably won't tell me a thing about it. Uh, Miss Pierpont, about Mr. Stiles, your complaint. What complaint? That was close, Todd. How much is she worth? The well, last time she tried to cash a check, the bank bounced. Well, if she'd have complained to the front office, adios, muchachos. Well, I'm shaking. How's your jaw? Well, listen, you fly with crows, you get shot at, right? I'm sorry. Ah, that's all right. Listen, she's really a terrific kid. Uh, her only trouble is, what do you do in March? March? Trouble? Uh, come on, we'll be late for work. Sydney. Forget it! Which one? Sydney Brooks, I'm in Miss Pierpont's suite, if there are any calls. You know, Sydney, you remind me of one of those old war pictures where the German ace in one of those funny old planes with the dozens of wings and the skull painted on the fuselage sits way up there above the dogfight and waits. When he spots some poor unfortunate flyer with a smoking spat or whatever it was they called him, pounces down for the kill. <laughs> Just give me a few minutes with a comb, then ask me which one. I fired Raymond. Raymond? The one you tried to steal from me last year, remember, dear? The President's Cup on the Potomac? Oh, that Raymond. Well, no wonder your boat showed up so badly. He was a simply dreadful driver. Which one, Midge? The one who pushed you in the water or the one with the deep blue eyes? January was the Monte Carlo Gala. February, Madrid. You should see uh, Pastorita Imperios Flamenco really too much. Oh, uh, incidentally, the in drink in Madrid is Anis de Mono at El Duende. The Balmoral Bar, try some of the Valdepenas wine with a slice of La Mancha cheese. In case you ever decide to venture out of Chicago. I'm going to hire the one who threw you in the water. Just try. Hello? Yes, this is she. Hello, Arthur. Problems? No, I do not want the ratio changed. I thought I'd made that perfectly clear. I don't care what Johnson's survey shows. No more than 85% of the store is to be used for selling. I want space. I want fountains on every floor. I don't want the shoppers jammed into the aisles. Arthur, women will not open their purses if you press them in on each other. Anything else? Tell Russell that I know Albuquerque is a lost situation, but we're going in with our eyes wide open. Everything will balance out in 36 months. Anything else? Someday, out of sheer sadism, I'm going to lock you in a suite with no telephones. Whee! Whoa. 
Although their line of credit is just under a million, what's their compensating balance? If only your poor old daddy had known that you'd run a shabby $15 million business into a $150 million empire, he'd never have had the poor taste to die and let you run amok. No, it's not enough. Look, Arthur, why don't you get the figures together and fly them down here as soon as you can? All right, goodbye. I was with my father right to the end. Where were you when your father died, Midge? On the ski lift at San Moritz? What was the in drink for the season in San Moritz when one father, bless his heart, passed on, Midge? Sydney, does it have to be a war? Don't you believe in coexistence? Do I try to compete with you in business? Look, leave me the Grand Prix and the President's Cup and the Monte Carlo Gala. You take the causes. I'll take the crazes. Isn't this world big enough for two rich little rich girls from Chicago? When my father bought me a Shetland pony, your father had to import an Arabian for you. And when we were sub-debs, you were the princess and I carried your train. And when we came out, who made all the magazine covers? Has anybody ever asked me to address the National Association of Manufacturers? Once, just once, Midge, I'm going to beat you in your own backyard. You tried that last year with that curious little boat of yours. Sydney, dear, you will never beat my gold cover. It's the fastest hydro in the world, but the very fastest. I'll beat you, Midge. I'll beat you. How about you, Sante? Salud. Sydney Brooks. Nice seeing you, Miss Brooks. Carmen, take over. You got my wife. Yes, I did. And a very good idea. Well, I think it's about time Florida waters get the recognition they deserve. That's why I want you to help me set up a race circuit for Unlimiteds right here in Tierra Verde. But I'm afraid someone else has the same idea. How much prize money did Midge offer you? in the neighborhood of 15,000, right? I'll post an annual prize of $25,000 and guarantee the same prize for the next 10 years. Miss, Miss Pierpont Sweet, please. My only condition is that the event be named after my father, Sidney Brooks, and that it can be held any time during the year except during the month of March. No, no, no message. It's tempting, but Miss Pierpont won the cup last year, and I'll have to give her a chance to match your offer. What if I have a boat that can beat hers? No such animal that I've heard of. How about next Tuesday on a course you pick? My boat against hers, and winner gets to sponsor. <laughs> With uh, Miss Pierpont, uh, I'm sorry I hammed it up uh, there, but I, I needed a grabber, you know. I know. Listen, Mitch sent me to ask you to take a spin with her in a gold cupper. Oh, I said. What about my offer, Mr. Lombardo? Oh, oh Mr. Lombardo, uh, is this how you lead the orchestra? 
<laughs> Let me ask you something. How come you always keep the hand back here? Is that where you keep the money? <laughs> hey, let, 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 let Carmen lead a while. Hey, just, just, uh, Carmen, Carmen, here. Here's your big chance. Lead the band. Come on, come on, guys. The boat is warming up now. <laughs> we'll see you later. Miss Brooks, I'll talk to you about it later. Welcome to the Monte Cristo. This house has been designed for easy living and easy entertaining. Fred, have you seen the food center area? You mean the kitchen? I, I'm glad you noticed that, ma'am. Now, from your food center, you're able to serve not only your dining room and your family room, also through this pass-through, you can uh, serve the pool. That saves steps. That's right, ma'am. And did you know the average housewife walks six and a half miles a day? Six and a half miles. But in the Monte Cristo, the average housewife walks only about a mile. I don't know, babe. I sort of like the Nassau model. Well, uh, Fred likes a carport instead of a garage. That's the beautiful part. Our designers have made these plans uh, so versatile that you can have this very house, the Monte Cristo, with your choice of either carport or garage. Let's go somewhere we can drink up a few minimums. What about taxes? Why? Oh, the lowest rate of any municipality in the area. Only $300 per year for 25,000 assessed valuation. I um, always put an olive branch in my martinis. How's the TV reception? Well, I don't know. You don't know who does. <laughs> I guess I acted pretty boorish myself. Oh, excellent, excellent. Just clear, bright excellent. Oh, let's take this one. If we take one, the Grants will take one, too. And that we can build next to each other, huh? I still like the Nassau model. When does the whistle blow? I'll tell you what, sir. Why don't you take another look at the Nassau and then make up your own mind? I'm here to serve, not to sell. Sex. I guess I can wait. She has the patience of a black panther. Which damper? I'd love to see the house, Mr. Stiles. You don't mind, do you? Make sure he shows you the food center area. Save steps. You're very kind. Mm -hmm. How much did Midge offer you? An olive branch and all the martinis I can drink. First the martinis, then the sonnets from the Portuguese. No onions on mine, just lots of mustard. I need a driver, Mr. Stiles. You can say that again, sir. The kind of man who can throw Midge Pierpont into the bay. $20,000, a contract for one year with options. Did you tell him about the fringe benefits? How's your bossa nova? Ah, you see, Mr. Stiles, Midge doesn't want me to hire you because she wants to hire you. Why? Because she wants to punish you for humiliating her. Of course, she'd hire you and then she'd toss you aside like a... Like Raymond. There are lots of things I am and lots of things that I am not. Sometimes I don't know which is what and what is which. But one thing I am not, that's a ping pong ball. You want a race? Why hire a driver? Why not just you against me? Wouldn't the victory be sweeter? Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure that I can beat you. My boat can, but I don't know that I can. You know I don't gamble, Midge, old girl. Nothing can beat the gold cover. I've had it clocked. Its top speed is 200 miles an hour. How fast have you driven it, Midge? Oh, 150, 160. Mm-hmm. That's why I want a man to drive my boat. You see, Midge, that's the difference between men and women. 40 miles an hour.
Miss Brooks? Sid. Well, where I come from, ma'am, our girls have names like Abigail, Blossom, and Elizabeth. I'm driving out to DeSoto Park unless... unless you'd rather drive. Well, we're putting the seawall in here. I don't get off till 5. I've already spoken to Mr. Berlanti. You see, I'm thinking of buying property. He thought, uh... he thought you'd like to drive me around. You know what I think, Mr. Case? I think you need spoiling. Has a girl ever peeled grapes for you, chilled them, steeped them in Chambol Musigny, and then while you were stretched out listening to stereo in front of a fireplace? Do what? I signed the contract. Why didn't you check with me first? $10,000 a year, that's a lot of money, Todd, just for driving a boat. About an hour ago, buddy, she offered me 20. Look, I know all about girls like Sydney. I grew up with them. I almost married one in New England. She had so much money, she used Plymouth Rock for a paperweight. Now, Sydney's a classy case. She probably collects tang pottery and Byzantine icons. You want to wind up just another specimen in her gallery? You don't understand her. Oh, and you do? I think so. Okay. Okay. One of our most desirable lots. Of course, it could be yours. Starts at the street, goes all the way down to the seawall. The uh, utilities are all underground. TV cables, electric power lines, telephone lines, water supply. And right here by your seawall, you can anchor your own. Boats on the ground, too, eh? <laughs> Maybe you're right, Fred. Maybe you're right. Oh, you will catch your death. Not in Tierra Verde. <laughs> Trouble, 200 miles an hour worth. I can go faster. Well, I'll tell you something. If you can, I know a lady will sign you to a contract. She means in an airplane. Oh, you're cheating. <laughs> <laughs> Fair fun around. Yeah, she's in her room. Hey, don't you ever wear any dry clothes? Miss Pierpont. Miss Pierpont. Well, now that you've seen me, you'll just have to marry me. Are you in the market for a driver? No salary and just one race next Tuesday against Sidney Brooks' boat. Welcome to the club. I don't care about putting her down. I want to put that kid from Texas down, for his own good. Mr. Stiles, you've got the wheel.
I know. It almost hurts to slow down, to stop. Let the world come back into focus. Blur is glorious, Todd, isn't it? Glorious. Afraid to blur. Let me try and put it delicately, Miss Pearpont. In the boy-girl lab, the uh, boy likes to think of himself as the chemist and the girl the elements. The boys like to make their own mix. A little of this, a dash of that. Sort of experiment. Sometimes you come up with acid, sometimes you come up with salt, but now and then you manage to really blow the joint up. But the boys like to decide how much, where, and when. Discouraging me is the deadliest thing you can do to yourself. I mean, he had slippery hands. I mean, some guys are just like that. Some guys all the time want to be in the water. General Lee built a fort on this island. Original cannons are still there. They were never fired. Does that depress you? Doesn't do anything for me, one way or another. <laughs> they were General Lee's cannons, not mine. I just said it because... I just said it because... Well, you park with a girl, you have to say something. I never read it in the Book of Rules. I told Todd I understood you. Do I? Do you want to? Yes. Do you want to walk? Why not? Lesson number one on understanding Sid. The usual amenities women expect from their men, Sid disregards as a top-heavy bore. Lighting cigarettes for Sid, opening car doors for Sid. Old Sid can light cigarettes and open car doors faster than any man. That's what my papa Sid taught me. I remember his earliest admonition. Get on with it, honey. Shall we walk? Say things you don't mean. I mean that when I'm saying them all right. And when I say something else, something opposite, something different, I don't mean them. The traces of them are always there. Coming back at me from a time that doesn't exist anymore.
Don't you think so? signed the 13th Amendment. Is it more important than the 13th Amendment? Yeah. I want to get this said tonight, Todd. Tomorrow after the race starts may be too late. Well, I always do my Christmas shopping. No, Link's shopping. not staying. Are you, Link? I don't want you to think I'm doing it for the money. Well, that reminds me, where is uh, Dan Mother? She's no different than we are, Todd. Once more, please, for the West Coast. She's leaving tomorrow after the race. So am I. This boy needs help. And that's what I wanted to say. What if you lose? What if I do? Link, old buddy, Sydney's a portfolio pruner. She cuts her losses and lets her profits run. You think she's gonna carry you north if you get caught in my backwash tomorrow? You don't learn to understand anything, Todd, unless you love it. Good night, Miss Pierpont. Love? Miss Brooks, you think your boat will win? Well, I always hope so, you know. Well, it's beautifully designed. How much did Mr. Berlanti, Miss Brooks? Nice to meet you, sir. Wonderful day for me. You don't want to stand in Link's way, so you've decided not to drive Midge's boat this morning. How sweet. As your Tolstoy said, it is done in Bradstreet list him. Ah, you see, Mr. Stiles, that's one of your problems, underestimating the enemy. You assume because a girl can x-ray a financial statement, she couldn't possibly appreciate the classics. What about Tolstoy? Something pertinent, something he wrote about personal misery. Personal misery is a result not of man's needs, but of his abundance. Having possessed everything, he values nothing, unquote. Look, uh, Sid, Sidney, Miss Brooks, my friend Link, he's a nice kid, a nice, simple kid. He's a believer, you know, but what's more important, he wants to believe. He's looking for something to hang on to, not to hold him up, something to stand alongside of him. He's looking pretty hard. Now, you're not it. I know it, and you know it. The most important thing to a woman is what a man believes she is, true or false, reality or illusion. So you race your race, Todd Stiles, and let me race mine. Now look, Todd, 
this is important for all of us. You gotta sit back and relax and don't get excited. You gotta get it up to about 200 MORs. And you, and you barrel it in there and you swing with it, you know, and get it. And when the rooster tail comes buck, 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 in the back, just hold it down, bring down the load. To the air. And then when this thing is up around here, if we know that we're really exciting you and you pass them by, you'll know that it's in there and we're gonna realize that we got the race won. So this is not an ordinary boat, Todd. This is a boat boat. So lots of luck, Todd. Hey, Banks. Yeah? Did your trumpet dry out yet? Yeah. Hey, Todd, I got to play the range before that cost me $5,000.
Please don't be defensive with me, Arthur. I'm not quarreling with your opinions, only your facts. It's open. I'm leaving in a few minutes anyway. We'll discuss it in the morning, my office at nine. It's fun winning, isn't it? That's what you want. Who doesn't? Right now, you're not so sure you do. You surprise me. I know the feeling. It comes after the guns have cooled and you're still standing. You're glad, but you're not glad. Sidney Brooks, my luggage is ready. On the desk for you, Link. Any complaints? I don't understand. I've uh, decided not to give you a contract, but to pay you off for the one race. It's your first check, Lincoln. As far as I'm concerned, your last. Any questions? I form relationships the way I use lipstick. To me, men are just another cosmetic, something that adds color. So I go out and find a new shade, something for autumn, something for spring, and, and I try it, taste it, use it, and I throw it away. For the first time, I don't want to. I don't want to throw it away. But if you come with me, I will. Eventually, I will. Oh, Link, help me do a good thing. For once, let me do a good thing. You can't disillusion me that easily, Sidney. I believe in you. No, don't. Uh, put them in my car. I'll be right down. It'd be easier if you'd say something. Say, uh, you're a good kid, Sidney. You threw me back in and let me swim away. Say, drop dead, Sidney. You're a stinker. I'm not afraid. Why should you be? The ones who get hurt, they're the winners. The ones who do the hurting, we're the losers. Check the plugs, huh? All right. We'll leave as soon as it's ready. Okay, boy. Just a minute. I'm not talking to you. So I can hear. Sydney? Do you realize you ruined my whole social calendar? I do have the summer in Newport, that's true. August in San Jose. September in New York. Winter in Chamonix and Megev. And then back to Monte Carlo in January, back to Madrid in February. Sydney, you've taken away my plans for March. So much wanted March here in Florida with my own racing event. Now what do I do in March? Oh, Midge. I think the world is big enough for two rich little rich girls from Chicago, don't you? So long, dear. All the utilities are underground. TV, electrical, telephone. This is one of our most desirable lots. Lot number 42 in Area 1. With the food center area of our Nassau facing east, you'll be able to take advantage of morning light, not only in that area, but uh, also in your family room. While in the living room and pool area, you'll be able to enjoy it. Now, here at your seawall, you have an average depth of eight feet. That's enough draft for any big cruiser. I don't see how you can go wrong with a piece of property like this. Excuse me.
I'll see you at dinner. Film presentation, Herbert B. Leonard, executive producer.